for videos on food fitness and mindfulness on the surface. It appears to be a worthy counter argument to the Surgeon General's advisory about the harmful effects of social media. But a new report from the nonprofit Center for Countering Digital Hate gives some insight into the TikTok content and algorithms that are shaping the lives of young people today. Take a look at this new PSA narrated by actress Laura Linney. Within 15 seconds of logging onto social media, the algorithm has your daughter in its crosshairs. Congress knows, but it refuses to act. Use your voice. Demand a plan. Join us at the Center for Countering Digital Hate, protectingkidsonline.org. And joining us now live from Washington, D.C., is Imran Ahmed, the founder and CEO of the nonprofit Center for Countering Digital Hate. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank, uh, thanks for being here. I, I want to learn a little bit more about the organization. So tell me about the Center for Countering Digital Hate. Well, uh, we're a uh, U.S. organization which has been operating for seven years, really at the forefront of identifying the different ways in which social media, which is so powerful, so great, connects 4.5 billion people across the world, actually can be when it uh, can be a, a source of harm. And that can be because of what bad actors are doing there, but it can also be because of bad design of the platforms. And in this instance, what we were looking at is the ways in which TikTok amplifies content which can be harmful to 13-year-old children. We did an experiment and found the results that actually within 2.6 minutes of logging onto, social, onto, onto TikTok, of creating a new account as a 13-year-old girl, within 2.6 minutes, it's sending that that 13-year-old girl's self-harm content, within eight minutes, eating disorder content. And mm. that was really disturbing. And what we then do is help parents and lawmakers understand that problem and try and come up with some solutions. All right, so is that all that you learned in the study? Were there any other insights that you found as a part of this research? Well, I mean, there were some really disturbing things. Every 39 seconds, we found harmful content being amplified to kids on the For You page. Now, look, on TikTok, it's not a social media platform like, you know, say Facebook, where it's about connections. It's really a broadcasting platform, and it just broadcasts the stuff that people put on TikTok. But there's an algorithm, there's an automated system, an artificial intelligence behind the scenes that decides what you see. And what this platform had decided is that if you're a 13-year-old girl, you know what really addicts you is content that makes you feel bad about yourself. We know that to be true because, in fact, we, 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 we did a little experiment within the experiment. So for half the accounts, we named them a girl's name like Susan. For the other half, we named them something like Susan Lose Weight to show some vulnerability. Those accounts got 12 times as much harmful content. So the platform recognizes vulnerability. And rather than doing what you or I or any of your viewers would do with a child who seems vulnerable, which is to be careful, to be cautious, it said, give them more. Mm. Lean into that. Interesting. Now, um, very interesting to learn like what ByteDance's al algorithm is triggered by. But your study, it was based on how many accounts? This was eight accounts? So we set up accounts as 13-year-old girls in four different countries using sophisticated software to make the, the, the platform think that we're in the US, UK, Australia, and Canada. We set them up as 13-year-old girls. There was two accounts in each country. And what we did is we recorded in video what the platform then fed to those accounts. But what we also did was a quantitative study. So we looked at the hashtags that were binding all this eating disorder and self-harm content together. We found that that content had 13.2 billion views. Now, by way of context, there are about 7.5 billion people on this planet and about a billion people using TikTok, which means the average TikTok viewer has seen these on average 13 times. Now, we know that it's more intense for those who are more vulnerable. So what this platform is doing is essentially reprogramming some vulnerable young people to believe that eating disorders are normal, that self-harm is normal. Now, I've got to say, uh, anecdotally, I believe that uh, TikTok is less harmful than Instagram, for instance. But what is a trigger for one person may not be a trigger for someone else. So how do you decipher between those? Well, of course, 
Instagram has been around for a lot longer. And in, you know, in the past, there have been court cases, not in the US, importantly, but in other countries where Instagram has been found to be liable, to be responsible in the deaths of young people. For example, the case of Molly Russell in my home country, the United Kingdom. She was a 14 year old girl. The coroner found that she'd been shown so many images of self-harm and eating disorders by, by Instagram and Pinterest that it normalized the idea for her that the normal thing to do if you feel bad inside is to hurt yourself outside. And if you feel really bad inside, to kill yourself. And they found that she was that th those platforms were responsible in part for her death. Now, we know that Instagram has been around for longer, but TikTok is on the up and up. You know, two thirds of American teens use TikTok on average for over an hour and a half a day for over 90 minutes a day. It is becoming a dominant platform. And as we see that we're going to see more more and more of this content. Sure, there's a small amount of good content on there, but what the what the platform is amplifying to billions of viewers and achieving billions of views is the really dangerous content. The content that has a razor blade that we saw with the words, I miss the touch of you on my skin appearing around it. Now, tell me the positive value of that. What do you hope that people take away from your PSA? Look, I think it's really important they go and have a look at our website, protectingkidsonline.org. It's got three things that I think are really important. One, it has a guide for parents and young people on how to have those conversations about what they're seeing online. Because the truth is that most adults, we don't really know what happens on TikTok. And so it's important for kids to help parents understand how the platform works. But then but parents can help kids to contextualize that information, can understand that it's not normal to restrict your diet to 700 calories a day, to understand that it's not normal to, exp to, to, to deal with feelings in such a self-destructive way. The second thing they can do is take action to contact their uh, representatives. Because look, representatives need to know that parents want them to have their backs. It's parents right now who are having to deal with this problem. In their homes, sitting there at 10 p.m., they know their kids are next to them, but they don't know what their kids are watching or what algorithms are influencing them and how. And the third thing that they can do is watch the PSA and send it to more of their friends because it's really important that we tell parents, you know, we can see the problems that you recognize as parents. We're here to help. And together, we can change the system so that these platforms have to think about safety, have to think about transparency, have to think about kids' needs when they design their products. Imran Ahmed, the founder of the Center for Countering Digital Hate, thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate your time.